What's going on nation? Sly here and thanks for coming back and checking out another Mass Effect Andromeda video. So first off guys, sorry about the lack of videos here recently y'all. Usually stuff always happens at the very worst times and I've been slammed to the wall with my job. And I actually have to leave Sunday through Wednesday for work as well. So doing that, trying to catch up with all this Mass Effect stuff while trying to make videos is absolutely crazy. I am so behind, and this was definitely not the launch that I had planned out. So once again, I apologize for that, and after this next week is over, I'll try to make it up to you all. So one quick thing before we get into crafting, the results for my giveaway will be revealed on Monday, due to my sponsors not working the weekends. They cannot be given out until Monday, so I wish I would have known about that earlier, but I guess that's how it is. Anyway, definitely keep an eye out for my winner announcement video on Monday afternoon or early evening. That will be coming out as soon as I get word on who wins. Okay, so with that out of the way, hope you guys are enjoying the game. The deeper I get, the more the Mass Effect vibe I start to pick up. It is definitely, you know, a different kind of vibe, but nonetheless, it's new and refreshing. This game is absolutely immense, addictive, complex, and absolutely awesome. I mean, even with the human faces, you know, and that whole problem at the beginning, you quickly get used to them, and I don't even see it as a problem anymore. And I hope you guys are loving it just as much as I am. Anyways, in this video, we're going to get into crafting. Now, this is meant more for the gamer who is just starting his or her Mass Effect run-through. And if you've been playing the game for the past five days, then you already know how things work by now. But if this is your first time through, then you might be a little overwhelmed at all of the menus and mechanics that are so casually explained at the beginning. So what we're going to do is go over how all of it's broken down, how it works, and what you need to do to craft the very best items. I'll also show you how modding and augments work, as well as fusion mods, which is yet another area that wasn't explained very well. Now, it may look intimidating, but trust me, after a few hours or a day of use, it becomes pretty easy to navigate. So let's start with the basics. Now you can craft in Mass Effect at any research terminal that you see. Basically, if it has access to this menu, you can end up crafting here. There's one on the Tempest where you deploy strike teams. is basically right next to it in the console. There's one on the Nexus in the same office as the three scientists and one in pretty much every outpost and a bunch of other places scattered around all of the planets. You can find one basically in the middle of nowhere on a single console or even in a scientific research building within a small enemy settlement. You will always have a place to access crafting fairly easily, so that's not the big deal. But in order to craft things, you do need a ton of different materials. You can pick them up naturally by just playing the game. Things like metal, iron, platinum, silver, and then there are elements like uranium, iridium, cadmium, stuff like that. On top of those, there are enemy-specific materials for like certain technology that can be picked up off of bodies. Now, there are a few different types of enemies in Mass Effect Andromeda, and they can all drop specific items that you will need. So with that said, pick up everything and anything you can find. Materials used in crafting do not take up space, only armor, weapons, and mods take up inventory slots. The rest are pretty much stored in like a Pathfinder's version of Santa's bag. Now this system runs off blueprints, and in order to get them, you need to research them. Sometimes they do unlock just by leveling up your character, however that is a rarity. Now all of your available blueprints are listed under development. You can make anything you see in here as long as you have the resources to back it up. Now the biggest thing to take note of in the R&D menus are the tabs at the very top. The first page within development is a mix up of everything all jumbled together. It's, it's a complete mess. Now as you probably know from past games, your weapons have different levels. You start with the number one version and as you grow in your character levels, your weapons level up as well. In this game, it's no different, and this first list sorts items by their level. Highest level on top, lowest on bottom. Now, I never use this list because it doesn't narrow anything down. It's just all of it piled together. What I do is I say, screw this list, and then I go back over and check out the actual tabs on the very top. So say you want to check out some weapons. Click the gun at the very top, and then there are menus to further refine what you're looking for. Armor, the same way. Click the chest piece to the right of the gun and then it breaks it down into its four categories. That way you can easily find what you need. You don't have to go and you know, scroll through a huge list of items hoping you, you know, land on the right one. After the armor upgrades are the nomad upgrades, which I highly recommend you guys build ASAP. It greatly improves just about every aspect of the nomad. It speeds up traveling and it makes things much easier to handle. Also, 
It makes it a lot faster in six-wheel drive, which you use quite a bit. Now, like I said earlier, each weapon or armor type comes from different technologies. And say, for instance, that you want to craft a Ket or Helios weapon, well, then it takes Ket or Helios parts to do so. So say, for instance, you want to see what kind of new assault rifles you could build. Well, we head over to the development, ignore the first list, and then click the gun at the very top. Then look for assault rifles. Here in this category, these are all of your available blueprints. The ones you can craft will be highlighted, and the ones you don't have enough resources for will be a little bit dim. Also, if you click on a weapon you cannot create due to resource shortage, the middle bar at the bottom will highlight in red what you're missing. Now, the best way to find out what you're missing is to click on it and then hit View Materials Required. Now, the reason why I tell you guys to click on the View Materials is because that little box in the bottom of the page, on the main page, doesn't really show you what you need. It just gives you like a little symbol and then, you know, how much of, you, how much of it you have. But it doesn't show you any names. When you actually click on the materials page, it shows you everything. It tells you how to get it, where it is, and of course the name. And remember that name because while you're out in different worlds like Aya, Kadara, I mean the Nexus, or even the Tempest itself, you might be able to find it there instead. Now it is always a good idea to read the descriptions. Like I said, it tells you how and where you can acquire these specific items. Alright, so as we back out of weapons, armor is pretty much the same way. You click into the armor menu and then browse around. Every list is ordered by item level, so the most powerful version will be at the top, whereas the level 1 and 2s will be at the bottom. Nomad mods are the next tab to the right of armor, and all you really need for this are the materials. All you have to do is simply hit craft and you are done. It'll automatically apply the next time you pop out the Nomad. Alright, so before we craft something, let's go check out the research tab. Now this research area is how you add blueprints into your development menu. Or if you have, say, a level 3 weapon and you need to find the level 4 version, this is how you can get it. The research menu is divided into three sections. Again, pay attention to the tabs at the top. We have Milky Way technology, which is, you know, the familiar Mass Effect weapons and armor. Then we have Helios technology, which is a mix-up between Angara, Ket, and Outlaw items. And then finally, the third tab deals in Remnant technology. Each category requires a different kind of currency, I guess you can call it. It's called research data. Every time you scan a certain technology or life form, it will reward you with points. Scanning stuff in the Nexus or Nexus colonies rewards you with Milky Way R&D. Scanning things inside vaults, including the enemies, grants you remnant R&D, and then scanning stuff in Angaran settlements or Ket bases will reward you with Helios R&D. I recommend that when you start getting enough AVP, look for the frozen homies that increase your earnings of research data, because that will help you out a ton in the long run. Now all of these menus are identical, they're broken down into weapons, armor, and augments. So if you want to craft a new weapon, say a Helios weapon, first we have to click on the Helios tech logo at the very top, and then click on weapons. Now these are all the available weapons that you can research, it's not broken down into assault rifles, shotguns, pistols, etc. All weapons are pooled right here. Also notice the bars next to them, those are the levels or the amount you've actually invested into research. So let's research this beastly pistol called the Ushir, or Ushire, whatever the hell it's called. Once we click on it, it shows its stats and the cost of researching it. Now you have to unlock them in succession. You start with level 1, then level 2, and you keep researching until you're at your highest level available. But a word of caution. Some of these weapons suck, so don't waste your R&D researching to level 5 like right off the bat. Craft out a level 1. Try it and then see what you think. You're going to know by shooting the very first one if you like it or not and if it's actually worth, you know, continuing to, to research. Now, some weapons don't really have that big of a difference between a level 1 and a 5. So you should get a pretty good feel by using the level 1 right off the bat. Alright, so the pistol, let's select it and then research it. Now that that's done, let's take a look at a piece of armor. Let's get ourselves a sweet new helmet. Nah, uh, this one's a little too purple for me. But I'll try to change the color later anyway, so let's research this all the way to level 5. Alright, so now that those are researched, they should be waiting for us in the development side of things. So let's exit out, head back over to development, and like I said before, skip this first confusing mess and head right to where you want to go. So first, let's find the pistol. As you can see, since I'm only testing it out and it's a level 1, it's waiting for me right here. But I don't have all the materials required to make it. So let's go over and check out the phalanx and see if I can get that. All we have to do is click on it, go ahead and hit craft, and it'll automatically be delivered into my inventory. It's really that easy. 
Next, let's find the helmet. So we back up out of weapons, over to armor, scroll for the helmet, and then boom, there she is. Also, the higher the level of a piece of armor, the more bonuses it has, as you can see on the right hand side. And that's it guys, it's super easy, it's just intimidating at first because the menu is kind of scattered and it's filled with tons of options. But it only looks that way because there are 5 versions of each item. It's the same weapon 5 times or the same armor 5 times. It makes it look pretty crowded, but really it's not all that bad. Alright, so next let's talk about augments and mods. So mods are pretty simple. First, you cannot create or craft your own mods. Now they can be bought at vendors, but you will see plenty of them on your adventures. The best place to find really good mods are in remnant vaults and those little lock boxes scattered around the planets. You can also find them off the remains of your enemies as well. Now there will be no shortage of mods, that's for sure. And they seem to drop depending on the rank of your character. So your mods will always be relevant, even on worlds you discovered at the beginning of the game. Now it's worth noting that you can only mod your weapons and armor at a loadout station or right before a mission. Now the loadout station aboard the Tempest is in the room across from PB's, basically behind Suvi. It's on the bridge. I think it's the side entrance of the ship. In any case, the locker inside there gives you access to equipping different weapons that you just crafted as well as to apply mods. So first things first, the more you play, the more crap you'll have picked up, and space in this game is at a premium. So once you find a mod that's better than the one you're using right now, equip that one and then either sell or deconstruct the old one. Mods are pretty self-explanatory in this game. All you have to do is find the weapon you're looking to mod, then click on it, or if you're modding your equipped weapon, there will be circles below that. Simply click the circles if you're on PC or click the mod button on a controller. Now it will automatically separate out other mods and will show you only what you can use for that specific weapon. Just select it and go. That's that easy guys. However, you cannot double up mods. For instance, if you're trying to get your gun weight down so your biotic cooldowns faster, you cannot use two mods that reduce weight even if they're called something else and have completely different negative effects. For example, this widow is heavy as shit and I want to reduce its weight. I have experimental materials and ultra light materials. One gives it less weight, the other reduces weight at the cost of stability. But you cannot use these together. One mod for each mod type, no matter the amount of spaces that you have. Now moving on to armor, there are two types of armor in Mass Effect Andromeda. There are complete sets or pieced sets. For instance, this Helios Champion armor is a complete set and it's listed under chest, but once you equip it, it gives you arms and feet that cannot be swapped out. However, the helmet is separate. Armor is modded the same way as weapons, however armor mods are called fusion mods. They're powerful, rare, and expensive, and if you're familiar with Destiny, they're pretty close to artifacts. Now most of these give you great bonuses, but at a cost, like for instance this one here is 50% more shields but at 50% reduced health. It's a very give and take situation. Now they can be equipped and unequipped at any time. So you can try it out and if you don't like it, you can get rid of it. So in short, fusion mods are just a fancy way of saying armor only modifications. All right, now let's get into augments and here is where the imagination can run wild. Think of augments as you know permanent modification tech. When the weapon is being fabricated in the development menu, it becomes you know enveloped with that particular augment. Once used, it cannot be unused. There is no such thing as unequipping an augment. Once augmented, it's final. And this is where naming weapons comes in handy. For instance, I don't know, shield smashing Maddock or power boosting Valiant, stuff like that. I mean, there are tons of different augments. Some turn common weapons into different weapon technology, like a Maddock assault rifle that shoots a laser instead of a bullet, or it can boost your shields, or it can boost armor penetration, biotic duration, recharge speed, combat damage. I mean, you name it, there's pretty much an augment for it. Augments can only be used in crafting or developing. For instance, let's craft that pistol that we researched earlier. All we have to do is find it, and then once we click on it, you're going to see the same type of circles that mods go into. It pretty much works the same way. Simply insert the augment that you want, Click craft and boom, that's it. Now once augmented, make sure you name it so that it stands out because you don't want to sell or delete your favorite weapon. Now all of those bonuses that that augment had are now tied permanently into this weapon. So what if none of these augments work for you and you want to try something else? Well, let's head back into the research menu and take a look there. 
So once again, the top tab breaks this down into three different technology types. Milky Way weapons use kinetic mass effect technology. It takes a bullet or a projectile, shrinks them down so it can be launched at high speeds. But right before it leaves the barrel, it increases the mass so that way it makes it hit hard. Helios weapons typically use plasma-based weaponry that also have the ability to track their targets at times, and then Remnant technology use beam-based weapons, like the Prothean Assault Rifle from Mass Effect 3. Each technology has their own set of augments, and you can also use their weapon tech on any of the weapons in the game. For instance, like a Black Widow with tracking plasma, or an N7 Valiant with explosive rounds, maybe even a Phalanx that shoots a beam. It's mix and match to your heart's content. One of my favorites so far is the plasma charge system. It turns any kind of shotgun you want into like that Geth plasma shotgun from the original series. Well, more or less. There's also seeking plasma augment, and depending on the weapon and weapon type, there can be up to four augments crafted into one weapon. So you can make some pretty crazy stuff here. Or there are things to help you on the battlefield, kind of like support augments. However, be careful on how you use some of these augments because they do react differently depending on how you use them, if it's on a weapon or on a piece of armor. Some can be only used on weapons, some only on armor, and some can be used on both. Like this battlefield assist augment. On a weapon, it grants 20% extra damage while at full health and full shields, but when crafted into a chest piece, it gives you damage resistance when you're at low health. These augments are created just like weapons and armor that we looked out earlier. Once you research it, it will be waiting for you on the development side, but kind of in a different way. Once you research some kind of cool augment, you need to head to the specific item that you're about to craft. Once selected, click on the bottom circle like we talked about earlier and your newly researched augment will show up in there. After selected, simply craft it, give it a name, and it'll be put right into your inventory. A word of caution though guys, while augments are powerful, they are finite. Now the catch here is that once you research an augment and then use it by crafting it into a weapon or an armor piece, you can never research that particular augment again. Like, ever. What it does do, however, is add it to the loot pool of augments that you can find out in the world. Containers, caches, rewards, stuff like that. So if you have a badass idea, save it for at least a level 4 weapon, or, on the flip side, make it very early in the game and craft it as a level 1, so that way it gives you plenty of time to find a replacement. But that's about it guys, after messing around with this for a while, it becomes pretty much second nature, like most other games, you know. The augments give combat a breath of fresh air, and if you're a strategist playing on Insane, which by the way is a complete disaster waiting to happen unless you're on a new game plus, then augments and mods will be an absolute must. Once again, thanks for watching guys, keep an eye out for my giveaway announcement video on Monday, we'll be picking a winner that day, so stay tuned for that as well as more Let's Plays from my adventure in Andromeda. Like I said, as soon as I'm done with this crazy work schedule coming up on Thursday, I'll be back to my old normal video making self. So definitely look forward to that. All right guys, check me out on Facebook and Twitter at Sly Nation or Sly Nation Gaming. It's the best place to find up-to-date news as well as new uploads from my channel. Like I said, I'll be leaving tomorrow and coming back Wednesday or Thursday morning. It, it absolutely sucks. And this is totally why I want to go full-time on YouTube. But maybe one day. Right now, I gotta pay the bills. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Keep an eye out for more videos coming out of Sly Nation here very soon. But until then, this is your boy Sly, and I will see you all in the middle of next week. Later, guys.